So, yeah, so this talks about simplifying parsing with uh, Genie BQ uh, by myself, Rick Donato. So, in this talk, we're going to cover what is DQ, um, how to install DQ, uh, what the different usages um, of DQ is, and then we're going to cover the, the different methods that we can use. Um, the, so, we're going to cover the three top methods that you typically use when, when using it. And then we're also, I'm also going to cover the other methods that are available. And then if, um, if I've got the time, if I've got the time, then, uh, then I'll, I'll jump into a demo as well. So a bit about myself. Um, I'm Rick Donato. I'm a network automation engineer slash architect. I'm also the founder of Packetflow. Um, Packetflow is a network automation membership site. Um, we provide membership, uh, online labs, uh, courses, everything um, that you need to, to kind of start your journey and learn. Uh, network automation. You can also find me on Twitter at Rick J. Don. Um, so that's a bit about myself and a bit about you. So the, for this talk, ideally, you have some basic knowledge of Python and also um, some basic knowledge of some network terms. Um, so let's dive in. So what is DQ? So if we step back and, and we look at what we typically do in network automation, and that's a lot of the time we need to parse uh, data. So we need to parse, we have our data in, in say stru a structured based format. Um, typically say JSON, i.e. Um, a, a Python dictionary. And so as that structured data gets larger and larger and you get dictionaries inside dictionaries and it's, it's very, very nested, to pull the data out of that structure can, can be quite, um, quite, quite intensive and, and it needs, it can be a bit of a pain to be fair. Uh, and what DQ does is it takes that heavy lifting out of that process. So rather than, you can see in the example there, rather than doing your traditional parsing, where you would step down, step down that structure all the way to that, that value that you need. With DQ parsing, what it allows you to do, do is actually simplify that parsing using a set of, um, a set of like helper, helper functions, helper methods, if you like, to be able to pull your data out of that, that big complex um, nested structure in a really, really simple way. So, so as I've touched on, it's, it's a Python library and DQ is part of uh, the Cisco PyATS slash Genie uh, framework. So it's a, it's a Genie Python library. Um, and, and so you can see here, so the top, top one is, is the traditional way you step through have to then step through every single one of those, those parts and put in the key that you, you want to kind of then go to and then go to the next step. And with DQ parsing, you, you literally do it on in the reverse manner. So you literally tell it what you want the actual value you want to take from that structure um, to be. So yeah, let's, so let's dive in. So, so installation and, and usage. So with, with DQ, you can, uh, you can use it in, in two different ways. So you can use it via the PyATS Genie framework. And the way that DQ presents itself is it presents itself as, um, as a, a method on your, your PyATS object. So you just use .q. So here we do a device uh, dash parse. We get the show version back um, within PyATS. And then within that, within that object, we've got the Q object available. And then we can then start using those methods to actually parse the data. And in this case, we, we're using uh, the get values method. Um, but all, more interesting, I think, is that you can actually use it on a standalone basis. So you don't have to use and use the actual PyTS objects to be able to utilize this. So you can just import the, the, um, the library directly into, um, into your Python script using the, the Genie utils. And then you can just use it using that DQ method. Um, and then the, the additional methods you put on uh, are exactly the same. So, so in terms of, of use cases, I mean, you can use this with any data structure that you're using. So if you're pulling out a bunch of, say, a whole load of JSON from something like Batfish or um, NetMeco and you're, you're, you're parsing the data out of that, you know, you can use this. So you can you can take this wherever you want, and and it's it's really portable. So um, so yeah. 
So let's dive into the different methods um, that you can use. So with the methods, so the methods are chained, so you can just keep chaining them to be able to eventually get the data that you want from that structure. So get values. So what get values does is it basically goes through your data structure and it pulls out the values for a key that you give it. Um, so for example, within here, we've got um, some interface data and then we want to pull out the, um, the IPs. So we give it the key of IP and it gives us the values back. So the values, because obviously there's gonna be multiple IP keys for each of the, um, each of the interfaces that we, would, we get back um, multiple, multiple options. So the, the re response to get values is, is a list. So you, you might not always want to get a list back. So you might just say, for whatever reason, you might just want the one, you might get one value back and you don't want that as a list, you just want that as a string. So you can actually then give it the, um, the index element of that, uh, of that list. So you can just get that, that item back that you can see there, we're, we're doing that and we're just getting the, um, the, the, first, um, the first element back. So there's, there's other, there are other options as well. And the other option that's extremely useful is rather than just giving it a string in terms of the key that you want, you can also give it a regex value, um, which then obviously opens up a whole range of other permutations that you can use for, uh, for querying your, your, uh, your nested structures. So the other method that uh, commonly use is contains and contains is interesting because what contains does is it actually looks through, you've got this large structure and it, you, you give it a value and it filters the whole path all the way down. So whereas before we literally gave it a key and we just got that one value back. With contains, it actually allows you just to then strip everything out, filter everything down to that one value and then you've just got this nice clean um, structure back. So you can then, what you can do is you can then add additional methods on like get values to then get the information, um, get the information that you need. Um, so yeah, so here's an example, yeah, of, of getting the ARP output. So we look for um, a value. So in this case, we wanted to get the IP address. And then once we've got that, uh, we've got that path, we've got that filtered path down to that, that value, we can then look and get that key to then get the MAC address um, and to get that information. So with, um, with, the, with the contains object, by default, if you don't pass anything else after contains, you will get back a DQ object. So you can see that here. So we, we do some filtering um, on our, our interface output and we look for, we're using regex here, and we're looking for um, values with, uh, you know, any any beginning and it's got uh, errors at the end. And then we get we get back the actual DQ object of the path that it's found. So what we can then do is that we can reconstruct that. So we can reconstruct that back into a dictionary. And now once you've got it back in using, um, we can reconstruct it back as a dictionary using the reconstruct method. So. We can see that here. So previously that interface output was, was huge. Um, now we've just got that filtered path down to the values that we've, we've taken from and filtered using the, the contains. So, um, so that, yeah, it's really, really interesting. It's really useful because if you wanna then, you've got a huge uh, data set you wanna filter down and you just say, you just wanna get the counters back like in this example, and you don't want all of the other um, fluff if you like then yeah, so you can then just use that. Um, and it's also really, really good for, um, for stepping through things in terms of kind of troubleshooting your queries as well. So uh, yeah, mass massively useful. So there's a whole load of other methods um, that are available. The three that I just showed you are the ones that you'll typically use like nine times out of 10 and they will, they will you know, give you the, the massive, the biggest bang for the buck if you like. Um, the other methods you've got not contained, so we can look for value, like filter the path based on the value not being there. We can then look for key value pairs and using that based on not and, and whether it does contain it. We can also look at value operators and, and look to see whether the values that we're pulling out are in a certain range. So we can then start 
um, we can start seeing whether it's between a certain range and use this against things like um, you know, potentially CPU usage or, or, or memory usage. So things like that would be typically useful if you know, you're getting that information back. And um, I know for the likes of uh, some of the stuff with Napalm, where you can get that information back in terms of CPU and memory, is, that, that would be really useful. Um, count, which is um, as it suggests, and then the last two are, are interesting as well because we've got the query validator in the string to the key query. Now the query validator allows you to take your query as a string and validate it. So if you put use the method for not contains bananas, then it would come back and return a boolean of false. And if it was uh, you know, a, a good method and then the method was okay, then it would come back uh, with true. And then what you can do is you can then couple that with the string to DQ query, and then you can actually then pass in your query as a string. And so that's really useful because what you could do is you could then start parsing this in through other mechanisms, not just Python. So you could then um, you could parse it in potentially via a chatbot or you know parse that parse that in, push that in through some kind of API, or um, it kind of opens up a few other options there. So yeah, we're pretty good for time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump into a demo. So what I've got here, so I've got a, some interface data that I've, I've pulled from um, PyATS. And basically this is just to show interfaces of a, um, of a router. And so if we look at this structure here, I mean, this is, uh, this is a dictionary and it's, it's coming on to like 900, yeah, up to a thousand lines. So there's, there's a lot of information in there, a um, bit of a pain to, a bit of a pain to parse through. So what we want to do is uh, we first do the imports. And what I'm going to use for this as well, I'm going to use uh, print out using uh, the rich print module and just, to go off a slight tangent, if you've not used the, if you've not used Rich before, um, it is a, it's an amazing, it's an amazing project, amazing, amazing library, um, just to add color to your, uh, to your Python tools uh, and the Python output. So yeah, highly recommend that. And so what we do as well, we're the, uh, the dictionary that I've got within that, that file that I just showed you, we'll import that as our interface data. So first of all, so what we do, so what we wanna do is we wanna pull out the data from this, this structured data. And what we wanna do is we wanna pull out um, the errors that, um, any errors within our interfaces um, within the structure. So first of all, we, we use DQ, we, we parse our interface, um, put our interface data into that. And then we use the contains um, method to get any, uh, any value uh, with, which begins with uh, anything but ends with errors. And we're gonna use regex X, obviously we, we've got the regex um, syntax there. So much like the example that I showed you before. So we get this back and this is, this is the uh, DQ path, um, as, as I mentioned before as well, that, that, um, that we get back and um, we what we can do now is we can then have a look at uh, reconstruct to reconstruct this back into move this out reconstruct this back into a dictionary like so. So this is pretty good. So like we're using reconstruct and we can just test out our query. So, and you can see that this is filtered down compared to what I just showed you a minute ago, then we've we filtered this down just to those, uh, just to those, those keys with the errors in, which is good. But what we wanna do next is we wanna then also uh, filter this down. So we're not seeing anything, um, any, any values which are zero. So what we can then do is we can use not the not contains method like so so anything that not 
doesn't contain zero. So we've filtered it down even more and we can now see that we've got this again, it's in the DQ um, object type. So what we can now do is we can then reconstruct this just to get the, the errors um, back for those interfaces that aren't showing zero. So, so yeah, so that's a, that's a quick demo um, of, of what it can do. And hopefully you can see that yeah, it can it can save you uh, save you a lot of uh, a lot of time. So um, let me bring my presentation back up. So yeah, so that's the end of uh, that's the end of the presentation around DQ. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Um, you can find me as I mentioned before. You can find me over at Packet Flow, and we do a really a, a, a TLDR um, network automation newsletter that goes out every week. So completely understand that everyone's busy and learning network automation is, is it can be quite, a, quite a, a daunting task. So if you wanna kind of get the latest tips and hacks, little one minute um, updates on network automation every week into your mailbox, then, then sign up here. Um, so thank you. <laughs>